Okay, welcome to part two on the specifics of gold extraction. As you saw in the prior video, my name is uh, Keen Wheeler, by the way. I wrote uh, and am still working on the fourth edition currently. The third edition uh, is out on uncovering the missing secrets of magnetism. The book is completely free. I've made a lot of uh, revolutionary discoveries about the nature of magnetism and field geometry as pertains to magnetism. Um, I've been contacted by uh, four um, people that extract gold through sluicing up in the Klondike in Canada and Alaska and uh, also in Europe. And I'm going to show you uh, a specific uh, field geometry that you'll need to use to cause uh, diamagnetic breaking of the diamagnetic gold. Okay, I'm going to show you here that at the end and as you saw in the prior video there are two properties to magnetism that nobody understood and this is one of many discoveries that I made as pertains to magnetism. Now the only way I could demonstrate this to you on an easy scale using a large huge dangerous magnet like this where we actually have a large spatial geometry on either pole of the magnet. And as I showed you one of the uh, some of the same properties actually the exact same properties that apply to gold applies to both copper and to aluminum foil is that they have low magnetic permeability they are dielectric reflectors this is with these heavy copper plates okay what we have here is low magnetic permeability i.e. it hates magnetism okay we understand that how is this applicable to gold extraction well I want to show you something that uh, can flex so I can show it to you very easily as I actually bring this aluminum foil over the magnet, you'll see I actually have a speed bump here, and I have a trough here where it actually does get sucked in at the center. Okay. You slow this down. Whoops. You slow this down, you'll actually see that occurring. The bismuth wants to roll off the table over here. This is the universe's most diamagnetic. Gold is diamagnetic. Okay. It means it has low magnetic permeability. As the gold, especially the fine powdered gold, is passing through your sluice box and over the riffles, you know, the uh, lightweight gold gets washed out. And any gold sluicer knows that most of the gold is the lightweight stuff that ultimately adds up. It's not the big stuff that you catch. It's like, oh, great, you know. That stuff has a heavy mass. It'll want to fall into your riffles. But extracting out the fine stuff is the real hardcore, and, and every gold extractor knows, is the fine hardcore stuff that's an issue. Because you've got a certain level of force and motion in the water flow of your sluice box. This is important that you need to balance that out. Now, it's not about working harder. I see a lot of gold extractors working harder, but it's about working smarter, obviously. You can work your ass off if you're doing something wrong. You're losing all your gold. You know, all the hard work in the world isn't going to extract the gold. It's about working smarter. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the diamagnetic properties of gold by using a magnetic field flux divergence and taking advantage of the diamagnetic nature of gold, i.e. it's extremely low magnetic permeability. Now we grew up with the notion of superconductors. Now I grew up as a mad scientist basically with liquid nitrogen tanks and yttrium barium copper oxide superconductors. You put a little magnet over it, you chill it down to liquid nitrogen temperatures and the magnet would actually levitate. And I actually make bismuth levitators as neat art forms. They're kind of neat. I mean I cast bismuth, this is bismuth, this is heavier than lead. This is the universe's most diamagnetic, hates magnetism element. Now this operates exactly the same way, not that I can show you because it's so heavy, as the aluminum foil does. It is repulsed by the centrifugal edge but is attracted at the centripetal convergence. So what we're able to do, and I'm referring to superconductors, it is not superconductivity. What happens is in the yttrium barium copper oxide disc is cooled down to the temperature of liquid nitrogen, it becomes extremely, extremely low magnetic permeability. It basically, instead of having flex for a magnet, you can set it on top of it. Once you apply the liquid nitrogen, then the yttrium barium copper oxide ceramic disc becomes super, super uh, low magnetic permeability. It means it becomes a bulletproof shield for a passing magnetism through it. And that's why a little tiny magnet will levitate on that copper disc. So it's technically not superconductivity. It's insanely high low magnetic permeability. That sound, kind of sounds counterintuitive. Extremely high, low magnetic permeability. So anyway, how can we apply this? To, I'll show you a diagram here in a second. I've got my chalkboard over here. How you can actually apply this to your sluice box. It is also applicable to gold painting, but I'm not going to show you that design at this time. This is the one video. At the end, you don't have to donate anything. But I'm about to make a lot of people rich. I've been working on this design now for about a month, and it's uh, going to work. I promise you, and it's not going to cost you much at all. I'm asking 
you know, I'm not selling anything here, but if you try this out, and you will, and you will make money, I'm serious as a heart attack, no BS, okay, I am the expert on magnetism, flat out. That book is incredibly popular, I've discovered a lot of unique properties. As I showed you with this magnet, we don't have magnetism on either side. We have centrifugal divergence and centripetal convergence. I actually showed you with the, uh, the, the brass flywheel. We have two totally different types of field geometry here than we have over here. Now copper, which is brass flywheel, is mostly copper. You see immediately breaking here. What we're going to do is we're going to use this to break the forward force in motion of the gold passing through your sluice box by using centrifugal magnetic divergence and... Just like this aluminum foil is passing through the sluice box, imagine the sluice box upside down. This is your gold. This aluminum foil acts exactly the same way as gold does. So, you see this? We've got breaking here. And what this is going to be incredibly important in is breaking the diamagnetic, low-mass, powdered fine gold into your whiffles. Period. Okay? Let's whip out the chalkboard. Then I'm going to show you something else. Uh, before I actually go to the chalkboard, something that's incredibly important, and this is a hardcore, undeniable fact, okay? The stronger you can actually test with a Gauss meter. People think, well, I want to use the strongest magnets possible. No, you don't. You don't. Now, I can't get this magnet over here too close. Well, this one right now, but it's a 2 by 2 by one inch magnet. You don't want N50 or N55 Gauss magnets. The, the nature of the beast is is to employ magnetism correctly, the way the, way the field dynamics work on a magnet is, is that the stronger the magnetic field, um, the Hallback Array are, are pure proof of this. What they do is you stack uh, magnets in a pyramid, and what you do is you change the magnetic flux density. You can see the videos by uh, a, a guy that I know called Super Magnet Man with a southern accent. You can see his video on pyramid magnets. He makes these for medical research. They have an extremely, extremely, extremely high magnetic field divergence. But what happens is it's so damn shallow that outside of like a millimeter or two above it, there's, no, there's almost no magnetism measurable. But right at the surface, there's incredibly high magnetism. So the nature of the beast is, is that if you buy the super powerful magnets, you think, well, the more powerful the magnet is, the more the field is. It's actually the other way around. The more powerful the magnet is, the smaller the field is. Well, how the hell does that work? It's like turning up you're going to have to think about this because field geometry is different than normal geometry. It is hyper-Euclidean or it is meta-Euclidean. It's like the same way as thinking if you turn up the power on your shower, you have more pressure coming out, then what happens is you've got a better vacuum sucking the water down. And that's exactly how the field geometry of a magnet works. When you increase the pressure outflow, you actually increase reciprocally the inflow from the drain, of course a regular shower doesn't work that way, but that is how magnetic field diversions work. So a really, really powerful magnet is not what you want. You want an N40 or N45 Gauss magnet maximum on these 2 by 2 by one inches, and I'm going to show you here in a second, okay? So extremely powerful magnet, okay, has a shallower field. It doesn't make sense to be. It's more powerful, it should have a bigger magnet other way around, okay? Obviously, if it's too weak, then it's no damn good, but you're talking about N40 to N45 Gauss max. No less than N35 Gauss, okay? So, let's first uh, show you what's uh, going on with uh, this on the chalk that I'm showing you here. Let's place this here so I don't scratch the magnet. What you want to do is you're going to place the centrifugal, remember the edge, of the magnet. And I'm going to show you the design here in a second. The centrifugal edge about three millimeters ahead of each whiffle, but I'm going to show you specifics of the geometry on the uh, flip side of this. Uh, you know, I use computers all the time, and yet I'm using a 150-year-old chalkboard from like back back in uh, you know Little House in the Prairie days. <laughs> I love chalkboards. So what that's going to happen is it's going to break the gold and drop it into the whiffle. And I'm going to show you something else here in the secondary, uh, not the secondary whiffle because the whiffle spacing actually changes, but the secondary array on the flip side here. But the uh, third and final array. And you could actually use a fourth one, but it's overkill because you're going to decelerate the gold, especially the fine powdered gold, so much that it's going to fall into the whiffles. Now, to catch the really fine gold, you're going to want a third array down here because you've ultimately decelerated, but you want to decelerate it far enough that it falls into your whiffles and you capture all that gold that is just sliding out your sluice box because it has incredibly low uh, mass and uh, the ultimate uh, force in motion of the flowing water is swipping it out you know, out of your sluice box. And you know, you're losing God knows how much of your gold, depending on how much of it is very fine powdered gold. So, 
what you're going to only want to employ, people like to put the whole magnet down or put the magnet side, you know, laying on its side, doesn't work that way because there's a dielectric inertia plane here on the side of the magnet. The part that you don't want to use the magnet to uh, cause deceleration of the gold, you don't want to use this part and you don't want to use this part. So if you're actually, people are using the cylinder magnets, as check the video below and you'll see this. The guy's using very tiny cylinder magnets, but he has them arrayed like this as the water is passing. Well, that's an issue because this center section, which you can see internet, underneath magnetic uh, viewing film, is exactly the same thing as the section right here. We have centripetal convergence here. We have centripetal convergence here. So you don't want to do that. This is actually going to increase. As you saw in the prior video, the guy uses... Um, he doesn't know what's going on. He knows it's working, but he still doesn't know what's going on. And I'm not deriding the guy at all. See the video links below. He slides the, the uh, gold coin down the trough, and he has a magnet underneath it, and he doesn't realize that the gold stops right here, which is where it should, and it speeds up right here, and it stops again on the other side of the square magnet. See, that's what you don't want. You want it to decelerate the gold as much as possible, so boom, it falls into your wiffles. See, he's using the magnet good but he's not using it right see he understands that the magnet is stopping that coin down but he doesn't realize that it's speeding up right here the same thing the compass will sit here and spin endlessly but over here eek, throws on the brakes copper behaves underneath magnetic influence the exact same way gold does so let me flip it over and show you how okay this is as the water they're talking about your first whiffle here okay and then uh, your, your, your secondary whiffles down here, and you want another array underneath this. You want them very close together, spaced about 5 millimeters apart, and you're going to have to use uh, heavy epoxy. Now, these are very powerful magnets, N45 and 45 gauss. You're going to want to space closely together, and you want to triple the separation between here and here. So you're looking about a half an inch here, and you're looking at less than uh, 15 millimeters here. So what you have here, and these are pointed at the edge, as you can see, but you cannot alternate them. If you alternate them north, south, south, north, what you have is you have a point of centripetal convergence here, and that is not going to decelerate the gold. That's what you want to do is decelerate it, cause it to fall into the whiffles due to its low magnetic permeability. Okay, so they have to be on edge like this, as exposed to the gold. Excuse me, right there. On edge. Only can use the centrifugal divergence. So. These are on edge to the whiffles as the gold is passing here. North, north, south, south. Then you're going to have a gap right here. It's nowhere near as big as I represented it, uh, give it representation here. Here we're talking 10 millimeters. Here we're talking 30 millimeters. So obviously I'm exaggerating here so you can see what's going on. And you want a vertical array of north and south. And what you're going to also cause is you're going to cause centrifugal divergence here, but you're also going to cause eddy deceleration due to this central array. Now what you're going to want is a secondary array exactly like this one after this one to capture the really, really fine gold. And once again down here, we're going to have alternate the south-south up here with north-north, south-south, and north-north up here. What you're going to cause is deceleration here, eddy current deceleration here. So you're going to maximize deceleration of the diamagnetic gold, which reacts adversely to the uh, strong centrifugal divergence of the magnetism. Okay, so you're going to cause deceleration, but also eddy current deceleration. So you're getting a double whammy. You're getting both shotgun blasts to the goal to decelerate it, to have it to drop into your whiffles. Okay, now I'm going to show you the magnet. Now the only way I can show you the magnets to use is I have to move this giant monster because they'll, they'll actually jump together so dangerously that... Oh my god! Oh, what a dangerous beast! Oh! Can't get that that close to this magnet. It's the only reason also that I can't use uh, the clip-on microphone. It is a magnet like this. You want N40 and 45 gauss, okay? But they have them with a hole in the center because you can use bolts for securing. I've got them over there, but they're joined together. They have a little tiny hole that you can drop a bolt through. Remember, you're not going to meet as the gold is passing through your sluice. Let's say the gold is passing this way along with your waterfall. This is how you want your arrays set up. This and this and the secondary array, and then the tertiary array, and then a secondary array again for dropping out the very, very fine particulate gold. Okay? So it has to be like this. The same thing with that huge magnet is the same thing here. Okay? You can actually see it here to a small degree, even though this is a much smaller magnet. You'll see a bump right here. This aluminum foil behaves under field divergence the exact same way gold does. You see this? If you look really close, you slow it down if necessary, you'll see a bump here, You'll see a trough here, the same way in the video that I'll link to you below of the gold sluicer. 
they'll show you the gold coin dropping down. Uh, it's in an aluminum trough, okay, against the magnet. Slows down at the edge, speeds up, slows down again. He doesn't know what's going on, but I'm not putting him down for that. He's doing the right thing, but he's not doing the best thing. Because he doesn't understand, nor does anybody else. So they well, it's the side of a magnet. You know, it's all magnetism. No, it isn't. Two different zones on either side of a magnet. Centrifugal divergence. On the outside of every magnet is a zone of toroidal divergence, shaped like a donut. And what we have here on either side is a vortex, just like a drain. It is a hyperboloid geometrically, it is a field hyperboloid. Okay, you can see it here, like I said, this aluminum foil behaves the same way the gold does. It decelerates at the centrifugal convergence, centrifugal divergence, and it uh, accelerates at the point of center. That's why when we have our magnets arrayed in our sluice box, you're going to need a supporting bar, okay? Either PVC, here, I'm going to show you the easiest way. Right here. Since you're going to use the magnets that have a hole in them, there's a hole right here, is you're going to attach them. You want the fast and dirty easy way. Attach them like this. Remember, north-north, gap, south-south, then inversely over here as I showed you on the chalkboard. Okay? This is not going to take you that long to build. Now, these little suckers are 40 bucks a piece. Right now, neodymium, China controls, controls all neodymium, so the price fluctuates. Now, this, is, this video and the prior video are the only two videos I would ask a donation for. And uh, once you greatly recover gold, I'll make a follow-up video. If you want to send me like uh, a $5 vial in water, you're talking 5 bucks here. Proving, and this will work, I'm serious as a heart attack, this is no BS, this is no flim-flam. You want to send me like a $5 vial of gold saying, look it, I'm making a lot more gold, here's a little $5 vial of gold as proof. I'll make some follow-up videos and I will get those vials, okay? Because this will work. I am not confident this is where it will work. I am 100% absolutely certain, serious as a heart attack, you can come to my doorstep and beat the hell out of me if I'm lying to you. This works. This is not theory. This is field geometry. I'm 100% accurate on this, I assure you. Now, people today, they screw around with people's minds, and YouTube is full of fluff and crap and nonsense and BS, and I can't stand it. Life is too short for that. What I'm telling you here is exactly correct. The same way the brass, uh, the copper, mostly copper, of uh, this brass flywheel behaves on that magnet, magnet on the centrifugal divergent edge is the same reason why your gold will decelerate out of the water flow and drop into your wiffles. You'll have to array it just like this. The spacing between here and here, remember you're going to want the wiffle directly after that so the gold decelerates, it's got a place to fall, so you're going to have to arrange it properly in your sluice box with the wiffle directly behind it, approximately 10 to 15 millimeters, you can experiment on that, but this is going to work. I guarantee you, on my soul, that this works. No BS, no lies, no flim flam, okay? Don't send me a donation until you've actually, after you've done this, and you'll see that it does work. Because this will work. I absolutely promise you. With everything that I hold dear, and there's nothing that I hold... Look, as long as I have a roof over my head and some food on the table, I'm not looking to get rich in this life. I like helping people. Okay? You can look into my eye and see that. I like helping people. Okay? I still have to survive, but I'm not looking to screw people over, and I'm not looking to get rich, because there's something I cherish above everything else in this life, and that's wisdom, okay? So, you can send a donation after this works, but I promise you right now it will work. Once I said, these are about 40 bucks a piece, I have no control over the price of these. These are neodymium iron borons, one in 40 gauss or in 45 gauss, okay? Thank you so much. I'm glad I could help you uh, recover more gold. And I will catch you later. Remember, my book is called Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. My name is Ken Wheeler. If you want to contact me directly, uh, drop a comment uh, below on the video, and uh, I'll be in contact with you. Okay? Thank you so much. And lux iveritas. Light and wisdom. Light and truth, actually. But both are one and the same thing in ancient Greek and Latin. So, thank you. Bye.